The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us. We have the Dow Industrials up 154, NASDAQ up 49, S&P's up 17, gold contract up $4.80, trading at 1293 an ounce. You get silver up six cents, fifteen dollars sixty-eight cents an ounce. Light sweet crude flat, fifty-two dollars nineteen cents a barrel. We're gonna hit those oil numbers out here today. Uh, yesterday, uh, not much action when uh, they come out at four thirty in uh, the afternoon. Notes and bonds, ten-year note down seven ticks, one twenty-one twenty-one. Thirty-year bond off fifteen at one forty-four thirty. Both of them, folks, uh, rejected lower price yesterday. We'll see what they do today. But the bottom line is that there's not a lot of uh, juice downtown here. King dollar, King dollar down 35 ticks, trading 95,640. Now, King dollar tested its high of August 15th yesterday. It failed. It did have some volume up there, so that very well could get tested once again. The euro is at 114 to 1 US dollar. The yen is trading at 108 and a half to 1 US dollar. And the pound is the big one. The pound is 128.82 to 1 US dollar. And uh, the pound had quite a ride yesterday. Two pennies, both directions. You had quite a ride in the pound. Quite a, beautiful, quite a ride, man, for beautiful sure. Beautiful thing, totally. Volatility, gotta like it, right? Volatility, man. At 2.30, folks, the pound hit its low, and then it just took off like a rocket ship. Bottom line is that uh, no matter what happens in the UK, it looks like the pound wants higher price. So we'll see whether they're going to push that off, get rid of it, of all of the above. Let's go over to my man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade, as we do each and every day. Don't forget, folks, Kevin and his team, Outstanding program every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you want to understand options, option strategies, futures, all of the above, great program. If you haven't test driven yet the Think of Swim platform, real easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN, hit the banner, you bring it up, they'll allow you to trade with paper money. It's an outstanding platform. Bottom line is that you want to be the bid, you want to be the offer. Well, you have that choice, uh, which is a beautiful thing. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Now, think about this, guys. One week ago, before earnings started, did you guys think one week later we'd be saying the banks are leading us? Yeah, that I know. Is a, that would have been a stretch to make that assumption. And sure enough, you know, what a difference a year makes, right? It, it's amazing. Remember the banks first quarter of last year, how good their earnings were and how poor their stock performance was. Well, now you're getting almost the exact opposite yeah. of that. So pretty interesting trade here. And it's, it's really healthy for this market that the banks are rallying here. Yeah, and you know what's so interesting, man, that and it's, <coughs> excuse me. What, what Kevin's talking about, folks, is that Citigroup shook it off on Monday. J.P. Morgan shook it off yesterday. It went from 98 to 102, and you had buyers. You, you know, we had an expansion yep. of volume, a big one. So, I mean, it's like, it's not that the, they just went up on price. I mean, they're stepping in, and they're stepping in with some action. So, yeah, it's the market, man, is so deviant, it's unbelievable. There's no doubt, man. <laughs> And then, and then Goldman and Bank of America put up some big numbers today, and tomorrow you'll get uh, more Morgan Stanley, which is another big number. So we're off and running in earnings season, and so far so good, guys. Yeah, and it, what's going to get interesting here, so if we bring up Bank of America, what you're going to see, folks, is that you know the high that was generated out here goes all the way back to March of 2018. It comes all the way down to well, that high there was like uh, 33. It comes, it comes down to 22. But you can see it's getting in the, large, the, the higher range again, you know? So yep. yeah. uh, time, guess, I guess, just heals everything. I mean, uh, you know, the, I guess the real, yeah, I mean, that, that's what it comes down to, you know? And we'll see, um, you know, that uh, the currencies yesterday, they were, they were really, that, that, that pound, Kevin, that was, that, <laughs> that was quite a movement, yeah. you know? Well, Tom, you, you know by watching this and Tommy, Brexit's a mess. Yeah. They have no clear path in either direction going on with Brexit. So, so when you think that the U.S. government has got some gridlock and some things going on, the, Euro, you know, the United Kingdom is a mess. It really there. is. Yeah, the vote was like 232 to 202 or something like that yeah. against yeah. leaving, right? right. Which is, you know, right. or a plan to leave at least, which right. is 
don't right. know. They need some so, type of yeah, plan. It, it, it really appears like they are no closer to a decision over there, which means, you know, a lower euro, a higher dollar. That's going to put pressure on the dollar to the upside. You know, even though oh, know. there's a lot of things, you know, affecting the dollar, without any uh, re resolution in Brexit, the dollar's going to stay high. Yeah, well, there's no doubt, you know, we had the euro, you know, I mean, uh, the, the pounds go higher. But the euro, yeah, the, the, the euro, <laughs> that's going to, what's intriguing here, Kevin, it, it seems that the thing has just shifted from what the U.K. is going to do versus what is the European Union going to do? When we right. just look at the currencies, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, it's kind of saying that, well, what are we going to do, you know? I mean, it would right. it, be a mind blow. It would, I guess it would blow all our minds if they just said, okay, it's like a hard Brexit, Brexit and we'll see what happens. It's like. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, you know, all this from a perspective of their markets and everything going on there is just uncertainty. You yeah. Know? And, and even though it doesn't seem to be coming across the pond over to here, uh, they, they have some uncertainty there for sure. But, you know, what, what's taking over our markets right now is, you know, Jay Powell back, backing off. Trade uh, w w with China, trade talks are moving. They're not moving very fast, but they're moving. We had some good numbers the, the first Friday, good employment number. And then, you know, hopefully w w with the dollar at least, you know, for a while that was higher. But, you know, we I think the Fed backing off, it's pretty important for this market. I think you're seeing that in stock. Yeah, no, there's no doubt, man. It's, it's that's that's the relief. Uh, I would yep. say in general for all companies, right? I mean, you know, you, you can push it so high. You know, I saw yesterday. This is the, I was bringing this up in the afternoon show. I mean, you know, our our rates. There's there's no doubt that you know with the ten years at two point seven. They were talking about Kevin. So, what happened yesterday is that Italy floated eleven billion in bonds. And we know, great place to go, but, you know, their GDP, their, you know, their debt is 130% of their GDP. And guess what? The demand basically outstripped the supply by three to one. So it's like this. It's, and that yeah. was, they, were all, they were only paying 15 basis points over the, 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 the two-year, five-year, ten-year, you know what I mean, as they spread it out, which is just amazing. I mean, it's like, okay. So the fact, think about that. The fact that there's so much demand for that bond, what does that correlate to over here the, and the demand for our bond? Seriously, man. I yeah. mean, you know, because it's like this morning they're laying out almost the same price, the 10-year. Yeah. 2.759 in Italy, 2.74. So, let's, like, who would you rather lend to? You know, I'm being prejudice, but of course, just fundamentally, the United States. I mean... Seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, unreal. Listen, folks, every trading day right here, and as Kevin said, this is the most wonderful time of the year. We get uh, <laughs> earnings, uh, no doubt, and th from this point on, they accelerate pretty dramatically, man. Yeah, hey, you, I mean, hey you know, your wife must have been out to Lululemon over the over uh, Christmas, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Lululemon, those were some pretty impressive numbers. And, you know, we talk about Lululemon and a lot of these retailers on the show a lot. And, you know, stock's up another 1.2% this morning. Uh, hey, this more is good that, numbers. Looks like that stock wants to get up to 150, 160, man. You're at 142. Pretty, pretty wild. I agree completely. Okay, man, you have a great one, safe one, Kevin. We appreciate it. We look forward to the show in 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 152, NASDAQ up 51, S&P's up 17. Those oil numbers are coming up in 15 minutes. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 150. You get the Nasdaq up 47. S&Ps are up by 17 and a half. And uh, if we go over, uh, we got oil like uh, 12, 13 minutes, right? We sure do. Yeah. So it is 10:18 and 40 seconds right now. So we got oil numbers 10:30 a.m. Eastern time. Part of the functioning part of the government right now that they're still putting out those numbers. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at the February contract. We're trading at 52.21. We got some action, almost a dollar in both directions. Up at four in the morning, we're trading at 52.40. We trade down all the way almost to 51.40. Yeah, lows of, where are we, low 51.47. And we're back 52.18 about. I was jumping in here during the break, looking at maybe some volatility trades that we could set up. Uh, what happens is, if we jump to the 11 a.m. expirations, they're gonna be a little bit off center of where, whoops, I'm in the pound there. As I was looking, we'll go back into commodities. If you jump to the 11 a.m.s, uh, 51.75 is a price point that you could have exposure in both directions, or you could have 52.50. Either way, we're about 30 cents away from, from those price levels. Uh, jump to the noons, you have $52 as an option. We're still going to be 20 cents away to the bullish side. So if you're a little bit bullish, not the end of the world, that might even be advantageous. But you can see, just pulling up the bullish spread alone, because you have the 20, 20 cents of intrinsic value plus yes. the premium in there, it costing you about $36, $38 to the upside. And then your similar trade going from 52 down to 50, 50, you'd be selling this. It's out of the money, all kind of premium of 22. So you're looking at about 60 cents, uh, $60, which right. represents 60 cents right. of movement. And you hope it's on the upside if you did it. Right. And something to consider here is that, okay, you're paying 60 cents. Some may say, okay, that's all right. What if oil really pops? If you're only closing out one side of this trade, you're capped out at 150. So you really got to be aware of that. You know that, wow, wow. I'm putting up 60 cents, right? right? But I'm capped out at 150. That's a lot of premium. Now, keeping in mind also, though, that if you plan on closing out both sides, then yes, you do have more exposure. Maybe you get the, the move in one direction, you close it, you get the right. move in the other direction, but just something to consider. Um, and then what you could do, though, is you could jump to the dailies, which also have 52 as an option. Now, these have till 2.30 as opposed to till noon. Okay, there's our similar bullish spread. The last one was going to cost us 38. This one's costing us about 47. Yeah. But you got $5 of exposure now, and you got till 230. 
Now, the reason why is because a lot of that premium's built in for the numbers coming in exactly yes. nine minutes. Exactly. Right? So they're not assigning a tremendous amount of premium from noon until 2.30. Because you can see from 38 to about right. 47, right? Um, so that's where you just need to decide your market bias. Is it worth it? You could have a type of volatility trade, and you can see the bearish one. Instead of about 20, 22, you're looking at 30 cents, uh, $30. Um, so, but two of them taken combined, you need 77 cents away from 52. Yep. And again, though, you do have $5 if you really got something magnificent that happened in the market, and you have until 2.30, which is really the majority of the premium you're paying for is that time. Because the odds that oil moves more than buck fifty-two dollars is not very high. It's 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 greater than zero, but not not right. very high. Right. Yeah. Let me just pull this contract up. See what we. Well, this is a delayed contract too, folks. So let me see. Uh, oil. Here we go. So. Intraday right here. Okay. So your first push. Early had some volume. Yesterday we did. Yeah, interesting. So I, my take is that we're going to back down a little. Okay. You know? So that would be trouble because of the 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 first one with that bullish bias, really. It, you know what yeah, I mean? it, it, so just because, right? You say the the yeah. premium, the intrinsic value. That's the way to put it. Yeah. The intrinsic value you're paying for is yeah. to the bullish side. Right. So if you're a little bit right. bearish, you right. don't want to be paying intrinsic right. value on the bullish side, right? right? But so here's where you get used to what you're doing, right? Yeah. You could go back in even if you wanted to play that pop. There's your 11 a.m. So you okay. could use 52.50. Okay. Yeah. So. If you wanted exposure in both directions, there's your bearish trade. There's where your intrinsic value is. And yes. we're talking about 34 pennies of intrinsic value, so it's much more bearish than, yes. than the, even the other one. Right. But if you're bearish, this would allow you. Yep. And you're selling the market at 5208, and the market's only at 5216. So you're only selling at eight pennies below where the right. market is, right? right? So that's kind of your premium. And then if you really wanted exposure, though, there's your bullish spread, which is just going to be all premium right now of 13. So you're looking at $54, okay, okay. but it's it's geared towards a bearish bias for yeah, sure. With 50, that 54 with uh, you got 52.50 uh, being your point. That's so nice. So you can see that 43 cents out of the 54, though you're. Right? Would that be 37, right? Thirty-seven. Uh, excuse me. Thirty-three pennies of intrinsic value. Right. Okay, Fifty-two right, fifty right. is yeah. our point. We're trading fifty-two seventeen. So you'd need it under fifty, but you can see, right? You only need it, and the reason why is because you only need it to cover this side. If you go, yes. You know, if if this one becomes the one with money with value, right. well, you only got to make up this side of it. As in, it's only got to move thirteen, fifteen, twenty pennies. But if this one becomes the one that becomes the one with value, you got to make up all of this investment on the other side. And that's yeah. why they'd be a little bit bearish. But uh, we get those numbers in six minutes. And uh, we got oil trading at 52.16. And let's just put it on even like a four hour, man. Because, man, would quite, quite a move, right? Oh, yeah. Going back to like the yeah. middle of December 13th, we're trading right up. Well, even, yeah, where are we there? December 17th, we're trading right where we were. And we made it all the way down to uh, 45, $44. And back. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities out here. Now, yesterday you had light volume, too, folks, as we went to higher price. Um, first data, that's getting taken over by uh, is Pfizer, it Pfizer, I believe Pfizer, it is. Yeah. They're going to be the biggest payment processor out there combined, right. for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, you get Bank of America up a buck sixty-eight. We have, um, let's see, Apple's up a buck sixty-eight. How about Snapchat, right? They're oh. really, yeah. Yes. Can I, can I, yeah, before, yeah. can we click on the news? Because I think, yeah, they, uh, that's your, uh, yeah. so the tumbling, of course, one day after the company's CFO, that's what it was, I knew, okay. um, is resigning just after eight months on the job. Um, and they give a fourth quarter outlook of both sales and EBITDA and uh, down about 13%. Biggest one day drop since May, but man, look at that chart, man. $20 it spiked to in February of just last year. And now you're sitting at six bucks. And, um, I would imagine that they're either going to go to zero or get bought by somebody because they're on a path to zero. That's for sure. Yeah, let's let's go take, for it. That's uh, SNAP. I mean, you're talking about chief financial officer, right? No yeah, messing around. Yeah, and I man. believe they he, lost their CEO. I mean, there's been a CEO, couple big replacements. Okay. Uh, maybe it's two two CFOs and yeah, within a year. I think the the creator's been the CEO. I think. So 29 bucks. You hit a little 482. Interesting move. And it is. It's 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 kind of a tale similar to Twitter, and that um, it serves a function. People enjoy it. Yeah. But and if you're going to be valued at billions and billions of dollars, uh, you gotta you gotta pull in revenue, man. 
All right. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like they pull in revenue, but they they lose money too. I mean, yeah. One point two billion. They still lose forty four cents. Right. I don't know. Sixty one cents. Correct. Wow. Yeah. They're going to lose. They're going to take in one point five billion next year and lose forty four cents. They're going to take in one point nine billion in twenty twenty and lose twenty five cents. That's what they're thinking right now. Yeah. So I mean, that's... realistically, the market when they went public is hoping for much bigger growth from this. I mean, to, to, they grew. They grew four hundred million dollars from 2016 to 17 yeah. and they're only going to make the same growth from 2019 to 2020 400 million right um, and to put in in comparison I mean you're competing you, you can't fall to the wayside whoops we'll pull up uh, I mean Facebook the type of revenues how do you get to that same uh, uh, revenue yeah. yeah I mean look at the growth of Facebook right 55 to 68 68 to 82 um, and they're a much larger company. Yeah. All, and all profit. And all profit, all for profit. sure. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back with these uh, oil numbers. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that Many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we had, uh, let's see, numbers. We got numbers that dry down to 2.6 million barrels, That's going right? to be the headline, yeah. I'll yeah. pull it up here real quick. We'll pull it up. But the headline is you saw a draw of, of 2.68 million barrels for crude. 
Distillate inventory is rising 2.97 million. Gas inventory is rising 7.5. A little bit bigger across the board, but they did expect crude to decline, and they expected the gas and right. the uh, refined products to rise. Jumping back to the charts, seeing how the oil market is reacting. Nothing too dramatic right off the bat, right? We were kind of hovering at this level. Um, you got oil that. sitting 5220, almost no reaction whatsoever. Wow. And to pull over, why not? While well, we wait for that market maybe to react and dig into what we're dealing with. So this is a full breakdown for to, to illustrate what we're looking at. This is the current week's numbers that we yeah. just got right here. This is the previous week. And these are the changes, which is usually the only thing you ever see, right, right. where we saw a decline of 2.6. This is 2.6 million barrels. Gasoline, we saw a rise of 7.5 million barrels. There's your distillate, we saw a rise of 2.97 million barrels. Um, and then we have, of course, other total mo uh, fuel ethanol, pretty marginal when you're looking at kerosene. Why don't we get more kerosene numbers, man? No, jet fuel, right? Uh, and resident fuel, uh, resident fuel oil. Um, but the headline number and the reason why, I mean, you're looking at, is that a, a billion? Because if two, yeah, it's probably going to be a billion in terms of the, uh, the supply. Because this, yeah. this represents 2.6 million, right. so that's going to be, you know, you're dealing with billions. Look um, at that. Billions yeah. times. Oh, right. Yeah. Times 52. Yeah. Wow. And so to put this back, you know why it didn't look like that? Because I had it on a four-hour chart. Okay. There's a little bit more of a reaction. Okay. So it did spike up real briefly, but so quickly by the time we pulled up the chart, right, it was right. back to about 52.15. And so we'll see how it looks. You were looking maybe for some negative action. And um, if that was the case, even the ones we were looking at the biggest, you only needed action maybe below 52 where you got your break even just to make up kind of the bullish side of right. that. But as we usually see in this, man, the, oh, uh, yeah. the the first move is not always the move that matters, and really, sometimes it takes until 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock for that thing to take off. Let's go see the market. Well, I want to get into the NDX, actually, because the as we were at break there, NQH, the NDX was starting to take a hit. I, I can see it right in this chart right yeah. here. See, we were up to 67.40. We're back down to 67.05. Right. Yeah. So let's just get yeah. it closer. High was 66.74.50. Yeah. So let's see. Intraday, well, it's going to be interesting here because, uh, because what you have here now, folks, is you, you do have intraday, you have a high volume high. So when you get that, your probability gets really high that you're going to go get back up to that level. Um, that being said, it's going to be like the attack now is going to be on 67.01. That's the bottom of that bar. And we'll see whether we can get back inside it or not. But this okay. is, if you're day trading, um, a market out here. This is a nice move, man. Meaning that what would end up happening is that I'd love to see it actually hit the that number there, the 6701, reject it. Because if that's what you had, that to me, if I day trading it, it'd be like, okay, I got a rejection there at the 10 minute. That's my probability is higher than I'm going to get the, the highs again. You know. Now, if you got an expansion of volume, even on a rejection, I wouldn't do that. And so we're, we're at four minutes into that bar right now. Let's go over to the ES and see what's happening there. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Yes, H9. Same setup. Interesting. Yep. Oh, no. Here's going to be divergence. It's 2624. Okay. So here, this is the divergence. The, what the E mini did is that it had the volume. And that was at 10 minutes, 20 minutes to 10, and then it tested the volume with dramatically lighter volume, so the E-mini doesn't have to go back there. So now you're going to fight out. Okay. What's right? We'll see is, what happens. Is, is the S&P right or is the NASDAQ right? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and that, that's a true divergence, uh, which is pretty cool, folks. I was just going to jump a little bit. What we got coming up tonight, oh, right? Oh, man, Mr. Dave White. January 16th, man. Time, time flies when you're having fun. Wow. And this market, perfect for some live action webinar. Dave is going to be in there with subscribers tonight, 5 o'clock. Nuclear Weapons for Traders 2, second installment. Uh, you do not need to have attended the first one, as in completely separate, but he's going to be in there talking about his oscillator charts for the 24 different sectors that he breaks down. Of course, you gain access to that if you just subscribe to the path. This will be 
archived if you can't attend live, and he's going to be in there talking about those machine learning techniques for traders that he kind of puts to use. Um, on the oscill with the uh, oscillators. When putting right. together those charts, right, right. exactly. Right. Um, so check that out on the front page. That'll be for all subscribers. If you're already subscribed, you'll see the link on your member page as well, and you can come in here and just kind of see what Dave's going to be talking about with his subscribers tonight at 5 o'clock. And if we go over, let's go take a look at the small caps. So the small caps, folks, yesterday, as in the prior day, well, bottom line was being subtle, saying, okay, it wants lower price. And this is, I'll show you how this shakes out. So let's get, if we go back to last week, you're going to see that the IWM had a high of $143.99. That was on Friday. You did volume of $22 million. Now watch this. Then Monday, we go slightly lower with $29 million. And yesterday, you go higher with 25. So today is going to be the test in the small caps first, is that can it hold 143.99? That's kind of where we're at. And you're at 144.45. So you're over that number now, but that's yep. the number to keep your eye on. Um, if we take a look at this intraday, right, they all, all these indices just did the same thing. They did, yeah. You know? um, Quite a pullback there. Yeah, well, there's good. That's that's. Today's Wednesday, right? It is. So this is going to be the heads up. We're going to have a highly volatile day out here. Um, you know, these things are moving around pretty good. Um, as the the identification, which is kind of intriguing, is that this is what the market did as soon as we started yesterday. Remember, they bought the NDX stocks and then they just run the market all day long. Yeah. You know, I, and it, I, actually, we'll bring this back up again. Good. I'm trying to figure. I think they actually did the exact same thing. NQH. Oh, back it up one more. Um, meaning that. NQH9, that they ran it, then it gave it up, then they ran it again. Well, the, the indices were a lot different yesterday as to yeah. some of them. The NASDAQ was really a leader there, powered by the start it of was. Netflix. But um, yeah. if you call like the, the Russell, it, for instance, was barely positive at one yeah, point. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, the net, the NDX actually never gave it up. No. I mean, yeah, it just, it just... Whereas the yeah. Russell had, S&P was a little different right. as well, even the Dow. Right, right. And the same queue is giving it up. So we're going to get inside the same queue and see what that's about. Let's see who is the culprit inside here. Yeah, who can we blame? Oh, I see. Okay, so it's going to be the takeover crowd. Uh, that, Pfizer's down. Uh, yeah, Pfizer. Uh, down 6%. You get uh, NetApp down 3.5. Electronic Arts is up 2.9. And Insight is down 2.2. American, I mean, United Continental is up 6. Look at that. Airline up 6%. Wind Resorts is up 4.9. Oh, you know, hey, listen to this. So this is going to be really wild. Okay. Yeah, I heard. The, the, the Wire Act? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and all these casinos are up. I mean, it came across yesterday, and you think they'd go down, but they didn't. As soon as we come back, folks, we'll talk about this, because this was quite a change of um, opinion in the Justice Department. Yeah. Um, that would go back a long time. Right. This, the last ruling was like 2003 or something. Might have been 11. But 11, yeah. yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per buildable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials up 95. Nasdaq is up 8. S&Ps are up 9. Market's losing its uh, mojo here, man. You better talk quick, man. Market's going to be in the red before we know it. Yeah, well, we we got to we only talk quick. We're going to go into the currency market, We're going to talk currencies. We really better talk quick, man. That's <laughs> right. And then Mr. Teddy Kegstad from Forex-Trading-Unlocked. You can reach Teddy there every trading day, folks. That website is forex trading unlocked Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Morning, guys. Morning, Teddy. Currency's a little bit quiet after yesterday's Brexit vote, huh? Oh, <laughs> that was so cool, right? Yeah. The that whole lead up throughout the day, and then um, even the dynamic. You found me sitting in here watching the Bloomberg, and and Teddy, he wanted the live stream back on with all like you know the industry data. And I said, I'm sitting here watching the live feed. Of what's going on over at Brexit, man? You know, and they had the uh, live updates every 15, 20 seconds. With, right. They voted down right. the three amendments, and then they it's pretty right. interesting. It was. Sure. Sure. So, that, and of course, the pound hit its low right at 2.30 Eastern time and then took off like a rocket ship. Oh, my God, did that bounce, huh? Yeah, it did. It did. Um, so, yeah. well, let's start with the pound. What do you think we're there? I think right now the pound, it's still going to be a bull. I think a day like yesterday was obviously news-driven, so that's why you had the volatility. Yeah. But as a whole, I think that right now, even though the dollar seems to have a nice little correction um, of strength for um, the dollars against most of the currencies, I think that it's not going to hold, you know? So I think as a whole, the pound is going to continue to try and it's, it's at least – if the dollar gets rallies against other currencies, the pound is going to hold up. It's not going to break that hard anymore. Yeah, it looks so, like 132, like man. I, I agree because you, you had a, you, that was a that's the, the second or third rejection we got in the last three weeks in that pound. It's amazing know? it happened right yes. literally as they started right overvoting. Right that second. And, you, and not that you knew, but every expectation was that it was going to exactly unfold as it did. Right. And still there was that right. type of a reaction. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, and then right now you see the euro, how it's slipping against the dollar too. Like I see that as just a bearish correction as a whole. I think that the euro, it's just looking for a little support base because it's been in that grinding higher okay. range. Okay. Yeah, that's what we need. Uh, you know, we need the euro to get going because the euro, well, actually the way it's setting up this morning is not bad. Those, those, those. This is the euro. This is a five minute chart, I believe, or okay, 10 minutes. Cool. So okay. this is pretty close. No, it was up like there at a high at about four okay. in the morning, 114.22, yeah. down to like 113.80. Yeah. So it's, yeah, a, it's in that kind of like coming into that support area. It's probably a very good buying area. And I would think that you're going to see a lot of strength come in and then probably push the euro back up to the 115, which will be that's the key upside pivot. If it can get above 115, you know, we're looking at 116, 117 for sure. Yeah, you know, some real juice. Feet. Right. Right. Yeah, I like so, it. It's, it's hanging at the top. Have you guys noticed what's going on with the interest rate market today? 
Yeah, the 30 year and the 10 year are hanging on their lows, but the two year took off like a, a ridiculous bull this morning. Interesting. Complete inversion of the chart with the two year and the 10 and the 30 year right now going on. Two so point. There's, something, there's something going on with the interest rate market. And if this holds with the two year, I think you're going to start to see a little move with the 10 and the 30 year, which that's going to start a currency move as well. Wait, can we go to the spread and see what we can do? Yeah. If it's bullish for the bonds and for the two year and that stays, then you're probably going to see the dollar turn negative again. Right. When, now, when you're saying the move, uh, Teddy, was the two year, was it going down? No, it was going up. Up on the yield? The 10 year and the 30 year are going down right now, pressing support today. And okay. the two year is rallying and making new highs. Making new highs on yield or price? I think he's talking about price. On price. Yeah. On, on price. price. So lower yield. Okay, yes. right, right, right. Yes, exactly. It's in the futures right now. No, no, I'm with you. Okay. So that's all this morning. Right. Oh, that's, that's good news. And gold is still holding its highs up there. So I think that, that if it's basing up there, it's going to get another leg higher, and then the dollar is going to see another break. Yeah, oh, big time, man. I mean, you know, listen, I, I was talking with Kevin Hanks earlier. We were talking, and they floated that bond in Italy yesterday, man. <laughs> they floated an $11 billion bond, and, like, they had three times the amount of people that wanted to buy it, and they were only paying 15 basis points over the bank rate. It's like, wow. So there's plenty of red out here, man. Sure. You know, it's sure. like... Pretty amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yen, where are we at with the yen? We're at 108.70 right now. Right now, the U.S. dollar yen looks like it wants to go higher. I think it's the Nikkei that's holding it up right now. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's what it is. I don't think it's that the dollar is really strong against the yen. I think it's just that with the Nikkei going higher right now off the lows, it's hard to sell the yen. Yeah. No, no, it's... This, it, it looks like, I mean, it's the currency markets, looks to me like they're, they're going to be the drivers of the, uh, well, the bond markets are driving the currency markets, the currency markets are going to be the drivers of the equity markets. That's how it looks like we're setting up this year. So I think so. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pretty wild. Especially with, you know, like I said, the gold on the highs. I mean, Tommy, what do you think about that? I mean, it looks more like it's basing and getting ready for another leg higher. I, you know, that 1365 looks like it's game, man. I mean, and that's going to be a big number, folks, because at 1365, we've been laying in this consolidation for six years. Yeah. It's like, right. oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're pushing on not just like weekly or monthly levels with certain markets. You're looking, like you said, a yearly targets that haven't been seen in a while. Right. No, there's, there's no doubt. And you can, you know, when you start putting it together with the dollar and the, mm -hmm. these other currencies, it's like, hey, it totally makes sense that the dollar can pull back. Metals can get some relief, as all commodities will. Right. I mean, that's that's where, you know, you just might have a commodity nice run here, folks, uh, coming For into sure. the spring, yeah. you know. And, and you guys got to think, too, that the EU is going to start to raise rates sometime between now and the third quarter. The quantitative easing is gone, and then their political instability throughout the EU. I mean, Brexit aside, the EU is unstable right now. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think you want to go vacation in Paris right now. No, Italy though. Mafia <laughs> Coast, Mafia Coast. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to totally. <laughs> yeah, no, Paris. No, uh, no doubt about that, man. Well, listen, Teddy. It's always a pleasure, man. We appreciate the update, and of course, um, you know these currencies. They just keep moving. And folks, Absolutely. every trading day, you can reach Teddy at Forex Dash Trading Dash Unlocked. Hey, you stay warm, man. So uh, you yeah. got a little, it's a little chilly up in Chicago right now, isn't it? It's, it's cold and it's going to get colder. we got a big winter storm coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday as well. And I'm supposed to go to Wisconsin, so I don't know my trip might be canceled. Are you or going ice fishing? Are you going ice fishing? Are you going ice oh, fishing? Thanks. Yeah, no, ice fishing, no. Snowmobiling, yes. Uh, Ooh, you know what, nice. these, folks, these guys in the Midwest, you guys are so tough, man. It uh, <laughs> blows my mind, all you guys. No, I'm not kidding. They, they send us pictures, right? Sure. Ice fishing. You know, a small mobile I can see. Ice fishing, man. Yeah, you got to be active. You can't stay that, inside all that's winter. That's pretty we intense, know. Man. We used to go yeah, skiing, right. man. You know? oh, I, no, yeah. skiing I can get. Ice, ice, ice fishing. Ice fishing, I hear you. Just you make sure you bring plenty of, plenty of brewskis with you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> all right, Teddy, thanks so much, man. Thanks so much, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Have a great day. You too, man. Yeah. So, and then we get the Patriots game. So it's going sure to be do, it's going to be so cold in Kansas City, folks. Uh, AFC Championship, NFC Championship, big day of Sunday football. I think the Patriots play out there. They're the second game at about 6:40, and I think the first game is at uh, two one two. There's going to be a lot of jokes about that football. Oh yeah, good. They get it <laughs> nice and pumped up. For them. <laughs>
<laughs> Let's go take a look at that. Hey, why don't we hit that? Where's that oil, that, that oil market? Yeah. Where are we trading yeah. that, right? Yeah. Where are we? There we are. Uh, oh, a little bit of volatility, man. Give yeah. it a moment. Look at that. These are five-minute bars. That we was... clicked away too early, man. So we just traded from 52.38 yeah. down to 51.44. Um, and we're back up to 5183. Wow, pretty cool. That bears trade. That would have been some nice yeah. action. Still in a positive position. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 111, Nasdaq up 21, SP's up 12 and a half, Gold's up 570. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow up 117, Nasdaq up 21, S&P's up uh, 12 and a half. And if we do go over to that bond market, uh, as Teddy was just mentioning, uh, th there's movement now in all of them, folks. And this is an indication, you know, this is this is quite a movement. Uh, here's the 30-year. You can see that buy that just came in, um, 1020. Nice volume in yeah. there, 16,000 contracts. You rejected the low of 144.24. Yeah, big move. And, you know, bottom line is that that, you know, if, if you're long and strong in the market, just make sure you get you keep your stops in because that bond market is indicating that uh, this market wants lower price. 
Oil. Yeah, checking back in one more time. So we were sitting at 52.20 coming into those numbers again, yeah. and we're sitting at 51.68 as we round out the hour. So yeah. basically, a lot of the ones we're looking at were the noons, the 230s. There'll be a lot more action in this market, man. So I, had, I just had to double check the chart again to make sure we were looking at five minute bars just because they're mammoth, you yeah. know? I mean, just mammoth bars. The first one, 52.38 down to 51.98, but in the span of from 10.30, you go from 52.38 to by 10 so 15 minutes you almost get a dollar movement to the downside yeah, yeah. that is pretty that's it wild. sure is man yeah so that's not going to help uh the market generally and either. pretty interesting that we spike you know right down to just this level we were hanging at this morning and so we'll see as we get to that 5160 kind of level just uh sat there from about 6 30 until about nine in the morning yeah yep the uh let's just go take a look at that dollar quickly dx h nine Yeah, that's still just laying right underneath that August uh, 15th swing area. Stay right there, folks. We got um, a fast market coming up next. Then, of course, we got our man, um, Mr. Basil Chapman. Um, then uh, Steve did the program this morning, but that will be replayed. Yep. Man, Dave White, that will be back. Thanks, pal. And then Dave White again. Go that's check right. Out. Dave White, check Five it out right on the front page of TFNN. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.